Hi guys. So today we're going to talk about setting up a natural aquarium and we're going to use a 500 gallon natural pool to explain it. Um, this is kind of a beginner's guide uh, to those of you who have never set up a natural aquarium before and would like to. Um, and uh, so I'm going to show you how and I'll, I'll explain the benefits. So um, th the benefits to a natural aquarium is uh, that you don't have to work as hard. That's, that's probably the very first real benefit to a natural aquarium is that uh, um, the effort once you've got it set up is much, much, much less. They also allow you to grow plants much, much easier than your standard aquarium. Um, you don't have to add CO2 to grow difficult plants. You don't have to uh, uh, do really crazy fertilizers to grow difficult, difficult plants. Um, you can grow just about anything. Fish thrive in a natural aquarium. When you build an aquarium that is well balanced and that has all of the things you need in it, um, you don't have to feed as often or as much. Um, the, the, the aquarium pretty much take care, takes care of itself. So, um, the 500 gallon pool that I'm gonna show you is, is uh, it's just a, a big aquarium, basically. Um, I have pulled all the top plants right now so that we can see into it and get a better look at it. And I'll explain the parts of it and explain how you can do this in your own aquarium at home. It can be 10 gallon, it can be 50 gallon, it can be 100 gallon, it can be 500 gallon, it doesn't matter. If you build your aquarium in this manner, you'll do a lot less work. Your fish will be much healthier. You'll be able to grow any plant you want to. Your water changes will be reduced dr dramatically. You won't have as much disease. It just stands to reason that this is the way you would like to build an aquarium. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so this is the 500 gallon pool. This is a uh, community pool. It has mostly small fish in it. It has a few larger fish in it to, to uh, serve certain purposes. Uh, it has a lot of plants growing in it. I have just fed them, so um, there's a lot of uh, food matter still floating on the top. Um, that's another great thing about a natural aquarium is that overfeeding it, uh, to some extent, won't cause the same kind of harm that overfeeding a pristine... Um, uh, glass bottom or even short substrate bottom tank. Um, the balance is so good that uh, things like overfeeding just actually add to uh, the aquarium's ability to maintain itself. So, first thing you should notice is that there are multiple kinds of substrate in this pool. Now, in an aquarium I would do this slightly differently. Um, because the reason that it's done the way it is here is in the event that I have to move this pool for some reason, I don't want it to be ridiculously heavy with substrate in the bottom um, or with, with lots of substrate in the bottom. So uh, what this is, is a deep substrate pool um, and its main um, uh, bottom is uh, regular um, dirt. It's, it's uh, all natural potting soil, um, doesn't have any additives or anything, um, it's just organic potting soil. And then on top of that is a layer of rotting leaves. Um, now normally what I would do is do the potting soil, uh, then the leaves, and then cap it with sand so that you still get that, uh, that sand bottom look of an aquarium and then you could pop you could cover that with gravel as well if you want to you can you the bottom of your your aquarium can look however you want it to uh, you just need the natural ingredients in the substrate and then cover it with the substrate you want to see it's, it's really that simple so um, uh, your first layer in a natural aquarium is uh, going to be organic soil um, an inch inch and a half doesn't matter and you simply layer it into the bottom of your tank. Don't make it too uh, packed down, just layer it gently. And then you want a bunch of dead leaves. Now you can find those leaves anywhere. Look, wrong, look on the ground anywhere and you'll find dead leaves. Just pick them up. Um, you know, if you want to rinse them off in a bucket, rinse them off in a bucket real quick and then put them in, in a layer of, oh, a half an inch or so. Then, 
layer that with sand about two and a half to three inches and that'll keep all of the tannins and dirt and um, uh, stuff that you've put in prior to the sand down so it doesn't float around in your tank and your tank, tank stays nice and clean and uh, and then you can cap the sand with you know a quarter of an inch or so of gravel if you want to if you want to see you know brown gravel or colored gravel or whatever gravel you want put that on top of your sand and your aquarium will look exactly like you want it to with the exception of the fact that it will have about a three inch to four inch thick bottom um, the way I've managed sand in here is that I've put potted plants in full of sand and those potted plants full of sand are acting like my sand substrate uh, simply again because I don't want to have to uh, shovel sand out of the pool in the event that I need to need to move it so then after you've got your substrate in plants and they don't have to be the most beautiful plants in the world they can be you can put in whatever you want um, that's Anubis right there uh, there is uh, some curly Valsinaria right there there's foxtail um, there are some pond lilies that I have just recently separated out. It was one big one. I've separated it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pots so that uh, I will have eleven pond lilies instead of uh, one fairly large one. Uh, you'll see some driftwood in there. You'll see all sorts of things. Okay, so once you've got your, uh, once you've got your plants and your substrate and nice clean water uh, it's time to add fish right so you can add all sorts of fish in a pond like this I mean literally anything you can add goldfish in a pond like this you can add cichlids in a pond like this uh, and again we're, we're talking about aquariums and and you don't necessarily need a 500 gallon pond of course you can have a 500 gallon pond if you want one but you can do exactly this in an aquarium and there is not a fish that you can't keep in an aquarium like this now once you've got enough plants growing even if you have fish that are going to eat your plants it won't matter because you've got plants growing at a rate that is higher than your fish can consume them there are lots of fish in here that eat plants um, now in this particular pool you'll see an awful lot of little fish on the top and those are just mosquito mollies they're they're fish that uh, um, uh, take care of the mosquito population in florida and so they're good to have around. Now they, they are a little aggressive towards other fish their size. So um, unfortunately it does make them a little difficult to keep in the, in the, uh, ex to the extent that you can't put a lot of really small fry in here and expect them to survive um, if you put them in while they're really small. Uh, you know, once they've, once they've matured a little bit, they'll be fine. Um, and also if your fish have, uh, um, have fry while they're in here and their mosquito mollies in here you can count on their numbers going down dramatically which is a good thing and a bad thing because uh, unfortunately mosquito mollies don't really have any major predators except for the few cichlids that are in here and uh, and they reproduce really quickly so every once in a while I have to yank a bunch of them out and throw them into the uh, uh, the larger fish pools and let them be food but so um, If you design your aquarium this way, you're not going to work very hard, and you're going to keep a beautiful aquarium. You're going to keep an aquarium that is almost always crystal clear. You're going to keep an aquarium that is healthy. You're going to keep an aquarium that you can put almost any fish into and expect them to thrive. Your plants are going to be gorgeous. You're going to be able to... Uh, uh, separate your plants and and reproduce them um, there are just so many benefits absolutely so many benefits to maintaining a natural aquarium versus a uh, you know a slate bottom or glass bottom or or a very thin substrate tank um, just it's just so much work to do that and it's so much less enjoyable in my mind to have uh, an aquarium that is um, that's just hard work and and effort and not really providing all of the things that your fish need to naturally survive anyway you're more than welcome to ask questions uh, subscribe 
uh, hit the like button, and then get down in the comment section. Ask anything. I will answer. I promise. That's it for now. I will, uh, I will show you one built as an aquarium soon. Uh, we're setting up a bunch of aquariums as the spring rolls in and the temperatures increase. And uh, we kept them all in ponds over the winter so that way we could only uh, that way we would only have to warm the ponds and not have to warm a whole bunch of tanks but uh, summer's coming so we've got a lot of setup coming